Hi guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to talk about the tech side of marketing, something I wanted to talk about for a while actually, and we're going to cover the digital marketing tools and apps that I use on a daily basis to run, market, and grow my business as a marketing educator and content creator. And I have a feeling it's gonna be a good video. You can't really think of digital marketing without all the tools and technology that makes marketing possible in the first place. Which brings me to my point that adoption of new technology is an essential skill for marketers and I wanted to underline this because this is a question that I hear quite often. In fact, I don't know if you can think of any business that doesn't need a technology stack to run their business. So maybe adoption of new technology is an essential skill for everyone who wants to survive and thrive in today's world. On a daily basis, I use more than 20 tools and apps to manage my business, to create content and to distribute it. And to be honest, I'm trying to keep my tech stack as minimum as possible in order to not overwhelm myself with too many apps to use and too many things that need integration. When I used to work in marketing agencies, I would maybe use twice as much as the things that I use today. And we would most of the times use the paid or premium versions because agencies can afford it because they work with a lot of clients that already have a bunch of software and agencies can and should invest a lot into marketing technology, obviously because that's their main job, that's the main service that they provide, so it really needs to be perfect. But as a small business owner at the moment, as a consultant, marketing educator, and a content creator, right now for my current role and for my current business, I don't need to use that many. And also I don't need to use a software that's aimed for larger companies, for larger scale teams. Because of this fact, I was able to downsize what I use on a daily basis for my own business. And I just wanted to share this upfront because I want you to know that this is not the selection of software and technology that you would see or be working with if you were working in a marketing agency or a large startup or a large corporate company. Today's video is my selection to run my own business that's a small business. So if you are a small business, this could also be a great start for you. Or if you're just learning new technology, then this is also a great start for you. But if you're already in a more advanced situation, then I can recommend that you wait for the next videos of this series because then I will cover marketing technologies and software providers in more detail and within their specific niche and solution area. I'll give you a secret. Even thinking about this series is giving me the chills and excitement because I love talking about and using and trying out marketing technology and I haven't been covering this on the channel so far but as of today as of this video it's going to be a new start and we're going to start talking about uh, more marketing technology that's going to really help you out to learn about the marketing technology that's available in the market and what companies are using today to run their business but hey if we're just meeting my name is Elif and I'm a marketing educator and marketing strategist making weekly videos for this channel around digital marketing and marketing career topics so if that's sounds interesting then you might consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to stay updated whenever there's a new video on the channel. Back to the topic. I want you to take a look at this image that I have on the screen right now. This is called the Martech 5000 and it's nicknamed after the 5000 companies that were competing in the global marketing technology space in 2017. It's said to be the most frequently shared slide of all times. By 2019, Brinker, who originally created this image had already added more than 2,000 vendors to the table and that makes over 7,000 marketing software companies fighting for the same buyer's attention and imagine the new number of marketing technology competing in today's world. Anyway, I thought that would be an interesting start to our conversation about marketing technology, so I wanted to share that with you. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the list of my current favorite tools and apps that I use as a marketer. I've categorized my list into different areas, different business sections such as design, website, email marketing, communications, so on and so forth. So I hope this is going to make this video easy to follow through. And let's begin with design because I have my favorite ever tool under the design category and that is Canva. I can easily say that Canva is my most used tool ever and it's one of the first marketing softwares that I upgraded to the paid version for my business. I create my YouTube thumbnails, my social media images, my Instagram Instagram stories, my resume, cover letter, brand style guideline, whatever you can think of, you name it, I make it on camera because it's just so easy. Any document that needs an aesthetic uplift on my agenda, it will go into Canva and I will create it in camera because 
that is the tool that I can use. I don't use Photoshop or Illustrator and don't ever intend to learn them because Canva really lives up to its promise and it's really sufficient for anyone who isn't a graphic designer. I actually have a couple of other videos where I talk about Canva and praise about it because it really changed my life for the better and it really made my life easier and that's really what I'm expecting to get out of a software if I'm adding that to my tech stack. As I mentioned, there's a free and a pro version and it was one of the first tools that I paid for the pro version and it totally pays off. So I would highly recommend it if you know that you're going to get value out of it, if you're going to use it actively and regularly, it really totally pays off. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below for free or paid version, doesn't matter. If you wanna check it out, you can use the link and just see what Canva can do for you. If you're looking for alternatives to Canva, I've heard that there is also Crello and people like it too, but since I don't have any complaints about Canva, I've never checked any alternatives, so I can't recommend it, but that's that. And the second thing under the design category is for stock images and stock videography. And for that, I use Pexels and Unsplash. And also, again, Canva as well, because now Canva also has a library of stock images and videos that are pretty good to use. Second category is website performance. And under this one, I have Google Analytics and Google Search Console. And I use them to complement each other because they go hand in hand. And I wish I would see the information that I see in Google Search Console under Google Analytics so it would come in with just one dashboard, but it doesn't, so I use both of them. And if you're wondering why I use Search Console as well, I use it especially to analyze what keywords are bringing traffic to my pages. Next category is research, and this one consists of the keyword research tools that I use for my website as well as YouTube. So here's my go-to list, uh, Google Trends, TubeBuddy, vidIQ, Google Keyword Planner, and Ubersuggest, again for keyword research and planning. Next category is social media, and I'll be honest here, I'm not currently actively using any social media automation or marketing tools, I just simply use the social media platform itself, and I use its native publishing and scheduling options, if it has any scheduling options, like Twitter and Facebook does, but LinkedIn doesn't have it, or Instagram doesn't have it. I don't want to use any more apps at the moment, so I'm just simply using the native platform itself. But until recently I was using Buffer and sometimes I use it interchangeably with Hootsuite just to see the differences between them and sometimes there's a new update to the software and I want to see what's the change. Currently I like Buffer for its simplicity and how easy it is to read the analytics but as I just mentioned I prefer real-time publishing these days but if you're interested in using a scheduling or social media automation tool then I would highly suggest using Buffer or checking out Hootsuite as well. Next one is calendar and scheduling meetings and for this one I use Calendly for scheduling meetings without the back and forth uh, email communication because it really saves you time. I really like it. I'm currently using the free version but considering to upgrade it to the paid version and I also use my Google Calendar very actively. I schedule everything in my Google Calendar to know what's coming up for that day and for virtual meetings I either use Google Hangouts or Zoom. The next one is documentation and project management and there were times when I used many more tools in this category but right now I've downsized it to only Google Suite and Notion and I am so happy with how everything works out for me for my current status of the business but in the past I was using a combination of uh, Apple Notes, Evernote, Trello and Asana for my project management and note taking. Right now I moved all of that into Notion and I'm building out different pieces of my life and business into Notion and I'm really really liking it. If you're interested in Notion there's a lot of videos on YouTube on how to use it effectively and maybe who knows I will also make a video on how I use my Notion uh, one of these days but what I can say is that it has quickly become one of my favorite tools to use. Next is SEO so for this one I use Screaming Frog which is a website crawler that helps you improve on-site SEO by extracting the data and auditing for common SEO issues and the other one is Moz Link Explorer and with this one you can measure your backlinks, most valuable pages, linking domains. Overall it will help you to have a better backlinking strategy to grow your site. Next category is email marketing and for this I've been using MailChimp for as long as I can remember. It's my platform to keep my newsletter subscribers so it acts as my CRM. I create sign up forms, landing pages, email automations, workflows. I even use it to sell digital products which is not one of its main selling features but I figured if I can use it for that then I will use it. So my ultimate marketing template kit landing page is currently on MailChimp. If you don't know about MailChimp yet, it's an absolute giant and the email 
digital marketing space and one of the older tools in the market as well. I've known about the MailChimp brand even before I knew what email marketing was all about. The beauty of MailChimp is the platform's usability and that you can start and stay in the free plan for a long time depending on your growing needs. And their forever free plan is actually a great solution, a great introduction to new marketers or smaller businesses that are just beginning out with their email marketing. Next category is communication. And for the most part, I use Slack to communicate with my team. On top of that, I use WhatsApp, uh, Facebook Messenger, and Google Chats, wherever it's helpful and needed. Next, for audio, video recording, and editing, I use Loom for screen recording and the webcam feature. Whenever I'm doing a screen share and I want my image at the bottom right corner or wherever, somewhere around the screen, I use Loom for that. The videos are downloadable or shareable with a URL. Sometimes I use Zoom as an alternative and I just host a meeting where I'm the only person within the meeting and then I can do the screen share with my own image at the bottom or somewhere around the screen as well. For video editing, I use iMovie. I've been using iMovie since the very beginning and I don't intend to learn another program because I don't want to go through that learning curve. Hey, if you're enjoying the video so far, please stretch that finger of yours and hit the like button for me because it tells me that you're getting value out of this video and that's really important for me to know as well as the algorithm so that more people can reach this video. Continuing with the next category, which is survey. For this one, I use Google Forms and SurveyMonkey. There's not really much to say about them, so skipping to the next one, which is distribution. And I don't know if this is the right name for this category, but under this one, I have Linktree. It's a tool where you can create a single page that includes all your relevant links you'd like to feature. It's often used on Instagram's bio, uh, which is also where I use my Linktree link as well. So if you have never come across Linktree before, that's a very common area that you will likely see uh, a Linktree link. Final two categories. Next one is website. For my website, I use GoDaddy for domain and my WordPress hosting. My CMS platform is WordPress. Astra is my WordPress theme. Yoast is my SEO plugin. I use the paid version. And the final one is MailChimp Pro plugin. Again, I use the paid version for this one too. And finally, the social media category under which I use YouTube, LinkedIn primarily, and Twitter, Instagram, as well as Facebook. And that's a wrap for this video. If you're interested in seeing more videos on digital marketing tools and building your tech stack by evaluating the options in the market, then let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.